Hi, this is Mr. Adams. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the bass that we have in the orchestra. It's the biggest instrument we have in the orchestra. The one I have is actually a smaller bass that some people might be using when they first start the instrument because it's a little bit easier to handle, a little bit more their size. But before we do that, before I show you the instrument, I'm going to show you a few things that you might have in your case or in your bag uh, whenever you rent or buy an instrument. So the first thing you'll need, besides your instrument, which again I'll show you in a second, is a bow. Okay. Uh, the bow looks like this. I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second when we start talking about the instrument parts and the bow parts. Next thing you might have is something that looks like a hockey puck. Yours may have a little metal part in the middle or it may not. This is called a rock stop. And all that does is sits flat on the ground so that you can put your base in here. And I'll show you that in a second too. And it doesn't slide around that way on the floor. So if you have carpet, you may not need one of these. Or if your, if your base has a little rubber part on the end, you may not need one of these. Uh, but they'll probably have one in the case anyway, just in case. Next thing you'll have, or you should have, is rosin. And this looks different if you've seen the violin, or video, or violin viola, or cello videos. This is different than theirs because it's a different kind of rosin. It's a little stickier because the bass bow is so much bigger. Um, so this is what it may look like for you. This is some bass rosin. It's in like a little rubber case so it doesn't get all over your hands. And when you get done with it, you just push it back in there. This little rubber cap. Pop that cap on, and it protects it from getting broken or misplaced or anything like that. And the last thing you may have is a stand. So the stand, this one is a fold-up stand. It just collapses like this in a nice little package. Um, they're easy to use. They're portable. They're pretty cheap. You may have one of these. You may also have a bag that this comes in. All right? Those are the things that your instrument may, may come with. Now let's talk about the instrument itself. The bass, like I said, is the biggest one. And this is actually a half-size bass, so it's even the regular bass is twice the size of this. And you'll see sitting on the ground, it's taller than I am. I'm only this tall, the bass goes up to here. And this, again, is like a half size. So uh, the parts are pretty much the same as the uh, violin, viola, and cello. They may look a little bit different. Um, again, at the top, hopefully you can see this, we've got a scroll right here, which looks like, again, a rolled up piece of paper. That's why they get that scroll look. That's what this is called. We have the peg box right here, this big empty area. On the other instruments, the pegs, the tuning pegs, go out this way. On the bass, they're made a little bit differently. Let me get close and see you can see it. On the bass, we have gears. Okay, so they go out the back instead of out the side. And when you turn one, you can see the gear turn a little bit. Very small adjustments. All right. Now, if you get a bass, just like with the other instruments, if you rent a bass or buy a bass, we're not going to bother these for a while. Now, eventually, I'll show you how to use them, but how to tune your instrument and everything. But for the beginning, we're not gonna bother these. Wherever they are, we're just gonna leave them there, okay? Because if we break a string, I can't get to you right now to help you fix the string. And cut, it's kind of expensive to fix a string sometimes. So I wanna make sure we leave all these tuning pegs alone, okay? Um, now, after the um, peg box and tuning pegs, we have below that, this long part is the neck. Just like below your head, you have a neck, right? Right here, hopefully, for most of you, I would hope. You have a neck. You also have shoulders which are right here on either side just like you have shoulders we have right here on the side we call these ribs or bouts b-o-u-t bouts uh, there's a front like a belly there's a back side that we call the back um, on the front just like all the other instruments you have this hole right here on either side of the instrument that's called f holes that's how the sound gets out because when you play the instrument it vibrates inside of here the air vibrates it has to have a way to get out so you can hear it okay so that's how the air gets out so you can hear things this black part right there is called the tailpiece, right here. And by the way, do not lift your bass up like I'm doing. I'm a professional, so don't do this. It's very dangerous. Uh, and the last, uh, second to last thing, um, you have this. It's poking out at you like 3D. This is called the uh, end pin. Now, the end pin on the cello and the bass actually pulls out. It can extend or uh, push back in to adjust for your height a little bit. So you stand up when you play the bass. And if you stand up and it's too short, you can adjust the end pin to raise it up some. Or if it's too tall and the end pin is out, you can push the end pin in and make it shorter. Okay, so you can adjust it a little bit just like you can with the cello. All right, uh, now, the strings are on the front right here. And these are obviously what your fingers are going to go on on your left hand. Uh, and what you're going to play with, what you're going to uh, make this create the sound with with your right hand. We also have one last thing down here to show you. This is called the bridge, this wooden part. And you can see a little heart shape in it. Yours may have that heart shape as well. Some do, some don't, but they're all pretty much the same. That, he, that helps keep the strings up so they don't smack on the fingerboard. It lifts them up a little bit so they can actually make some good vibrations and good sounds. All right. Now, um, as I mentioned a minute ago, you do stand up when you play the bass. Some people, if you watch professional orchestras, you'll see them sitting on a stool. That's okay because they play for a long, long time and it's hard for them to stand up that long. 
uh, but the stool helps get them up high enough where they can reach everything. If you try to sit in the chair and do this, you're gonna be way too low, and you're gonna be down there like this, and that just looks ridiculous. Okay, so you're gonna stand up when you play the bass. Um, your fingers go on here on your left hand. If you need help with that, if you make an L like this with your left, with your both hands, your left hand is the one that actually makes the L the right direction. The other hand makes it backwards L. So this is your left hand. I know it might be backwards on the video to you, but this is your left hand. It goes up here and it goes on the left side of your body. For the bass, you don't stand behind it because then it's hard to reach. You stand off to the side a little bit. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this, but the bass is like this still. The bass is facing the camera on the front. I'm standing off to the side. I'm not standing behind it. Like cello, I'm standing off to the side. Um, and then you play with your right hand. Now, there are a couple different ways you can play. A couple different ways you can start the sound. One way is with the bow. So for the bow, there are certain parts for the bow just like there are for the instrument. First of all, this part across the top is called the stick because it is a stick. It's very clever. Um, this part on the end here is called the tip, the pointy end, the part that's furthest away from your hand is called the, the tip. Down here, you'll notice I'm not touching this part. I'm just running my finger next to it. This is the bow hair, or, or the, um, much call, here called the hair sometimes. You don't want to touch that. That's the part that goes on the strings, but if you touch it, the oil on your fingers can sometimes get in the, the hairs and can tear them up. So you don't want to touch the hairs with your fingers. It touches the strings, and that's okay, but not your fingers. Um, then down here, this little box down here, the wooden part is called the frog. I don't know why it's called that, but that's what they call it, the frog. And then we have this screw down here. Now this screw, the silver part, will actually turn left and right. You do not want to turn that right now because it can actually snap your bow in half and then you're, you're going to have a bow and it's really expensive to replace. So we're going to leave the tuning pegs alone and we're going to leave the bow, the screw alone. Okay, We're not even going to use the bow at first for the first little while of class. We're going to use something else instead, but I'll show you the bow first. The bow, you come all the way down uh, next to where the fingerboard stops, between the fingerboard and the bridge. And I'll show you that again later on in a different video. But you go all the way down there with the bow and you pull it across the string so it sounds like this. I'm going to come a little closer. You might be able to see the string actually vibrate. Watch this string right here while I, while I bow it. Okay? Now that's the biggest string on the bass. It's the lowest string on the bass. It's called an E. The letter name is E. Not important that you know that right this minute. You can actually play with the bow across the strings like this. Okay, so you can hear when I bowed it and I moved my fingers in different spots, it made different sounds. That's one way you can do it. You can also uh, use your fingers to pluck it. And bass players usually either use their first finger, which is this one, or their second finger, or they could sometimes use them kind of both together. You're not plucking it twice, you're just kind of holding it together. It makes it a little bit stronger with your fingers that way. So I'm going to play the same thing I just played, but I'm going to play it with my fingers. If you listen to jazz music or even rock and roll music and stuff like that, you'll hear this a lot. Okay? So that's playing with your fingers or the bow. And like I said, the beginning of class, first little while, uh, we're only going to use our hands, use our fingers to play. We're not going to use the bow for a little while. We'll get into that a few pages into the book. Um, so that's the bass, and I hope you watch the violin, viola, and cello videos as well so you have an idea what those look like and sound like. If you have any questions, um, I'll always be glad to help you. My email address is samuel.adams2 at montgomery.kyscores.us, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have or help you out or let you hear uh, other examples of the other instruments if you want. Just let me know. Until I see you, see you later.